Hello everybody, my name is Rahul and in this video, we will be talking about the HTTP2 rapid reset attack, which has been given the CVE 2023-4487. Now, this attack has such a wide impact that even the biggest cloud vendors like Google, Amazon and even Cloudflare had to come up and publicly disclose what they are witnessing in the wild. So, in this video, hum kya karenge that we will be going through uh, how that attack is actually implemented, how a feature of HTTP2 turned against it and there is also an exploit that you can try but I won't recommend doing that. But before we move on with the video, let's talk about the differences of HTTP1 and 2 so that you have a better understanding of how this attack actually came into existence. All right. So, first of what is HTTP 1 and how it is different from HTTP 2. Now, the biggest difference is that HTTP 1.1 is textual in nature and HTTP 2 is actually binary in nature. So, what do I mean? So, in HTTP 2, uh, if you read the documentations, what you will find referenced in most of the places is the word binary or streams. All right. But in HTTP 1, you won't find that and if you want to uh, actually look into it what you can do is just look up that whether a content length is mandatory for http2 or not and you'll be quite surprised to know that you don't actually need the content length header to um, to send along with the http2 request and that is one of the reasons uh, why request smuggling might not be that prevalent in http2 you can try downgrading attacks but that's a whole different video so let's talk about CV 2023-44487. Now what happens here is when it comes to HTTP 1.1, you can only send one request at a time and then uh, what the server will do is it will send one response. Now in dono ke beech mein, there is a whole lot of things happening. For example, a three-way TLS handshake will take place and a bunch of other things before the server finally gives you a response. This is in terms of HTTPS. So this was a major problem, right? Because you can only have one request at a time. But you, if you try to send in multiple requests, for example, you can try multiplexing. So what would happen is if the first request fails, the subsequent requests will also fail. Now, this is a big problem because if the first one fails, the other ones will eventually fail. But with HTTP 2, you can send in multiple streams in one TCP connection and isme each stream is equivalent to an HTTP request. So as you can see, we are multiplexing kar rahe that you are sending in multiple requests at the same time through one TCP connection. Now, the best part here is that you can send in a lot of other streams or a lot of other requests in one TCP connection or through one TCP connection. Now, what do I mean by that is I think it's a bit contextual and how you configure your server. But from what I was reading through the documentation, uh, you can actually send in about uh, 100 streams or 100 requests through one TCP connection. And I'll show you uh, where it is written in a moment. Now, if you send in 100 streams, that's a big thing because you're sending a lot of traffic through one TCP connection. And that is where you can abuse this feature. Now let's go here. And this is the Google Cloud uh, documentation that I'm reading on uh, how they came across the rapid reset. So here it says that HTTP2, the client can open multiple concurrent streams on a single TCP connection and each stream corresponds to one HTTP request. Some clients may open 100 streams per request and the server processes all these requests in parallel. So what will happen here is if you send in two requests, the server will actually process both of these requests parallelly and then send you the response back. Now, this is the part where it's get pretty interesting. So here is a diagram of HTTP one. So what is happening here is you are sending in one request. There are a lot of things happening, but will not get into that. You'll get one response. Now with HTTP two, you get a lot of streams, a lot of requests that you can send in with one TCP connection and you get all those responses back. But it gets pretty interesting because you can also abuse this feature. Okay, so let's try to uh, see what happens. So there is a frame called RST stream frame. So 
what happens here is as soon as you send all these requests to the server you do not wait for its response as long as you're sending the request you also send a frame called the rst stream frame that we just learned about so this attack primarily relies on you sending the stream the server just begins to process it but just after that you send a rst stream frame and the server cancels the processing now in this way you can utilize this attack to send one over 100 streams over one tcp connection because you are sending a stream cancelling it sending cancelling sending cancelling in this way you can send a lot of streams through one tcp connection and exhaust the resources of the server so this is how the http reset attack comes into play now i highly recommend that you actually go and read around the http reset attack there are a lot of articles around it on google 